Now that we've created the item type, let's create the actual item. For this video, we're gonna focus on the third person perspective, which as a reminder can also be used for AI or networked characters. So let's get started by opening up the item manager underneath the tools menu. And you can see here that this window should look similar to the character manager. At the very top, we have a link to different example configurations from the documentation. And I definitely recommend taking a look at that page just so that you can see how to set up different types of items. For now though, we're just gonna go through each field and the very first field specifies the item. This is the model that you want to use for the item. And I'm going to specify the assault rifle model. It automatically fills out the name to the name of the model. And I want to adjust that name. So instead of calling it assault rifle, I want to call it my assault rifle. And I did this just because the name of the item type is my assault rifle. And it's just a convenient way to map the two. Um, it's by no means required though that the name has to match the item type name. For character, I'm going to leave that blank because I want to create an item prefab instead of assigning the item directly to a single character. The advantage of creating a prefab is that this single item can then be used across multiple characters and multiple character models. If you have a character that has multiple models, you have to use this prefab so that the item can transfer between the different character models. So I'm gonna leave the character field blank and under slot ID, a value of zero is good for this case as well. Um, a value of zero specifies the right hand by default and a value of one specifies the left hand by default. Um, this slot ID is the same slot ID that was created when we created the character under item slots. If you remember, we clicked adjust slots and there was an ID associated there with each hand. So slot ID, leaving at zero. Under the item definition, we are going to specify the item type that we created earlier. Um, item types inherit item definitions. Um, and so basically an item type is an item definition. Item definition is used within the ultimate inventory system integration. So that's why there's that difference. As soon as we specify an item type, it asks if we want to add the item prefab to the item definition. And what this is asking is if we want to take this prefab that will be created and assign it to the prefabs field underneath the item type. And we do want that because we want the item type and the prefab to map to each other so, so that we want to leave enabled. Under animator item ID, we want to specify a value of one. This is just an arbitrary number that we're using for the demo scene. If you look in the documentation, we have default values for all the different item IDs. And this is just a value that the animator uses so it knows, for example, what state to transition to when you are equipping the assault rifle or you're holding the assault rifle. We are not creating a first person item, so I'm gonna leave that deselected. And under third person, we do want a third person item, so I'm going to enable that and the visible item is a model that we had specified. Um, the animator controller is the assault rifle animator controller. This is what animates, for example, the trigger moving when you're firing the weapon. Under actions, you can specify an action template, which is an existing item that has already been created and you just want to copy all the same action as actions as that existing item to your new item. Actions are the functions that the item can perform, such as shooting or using it as a melee weapon. Um, so yeah, we're gonna leave the action template blank. Under the this list, we are going to add shootable though, because we want the item to have a shootable action. Now I'm gonna hit build, and it's gonna ask me where I want to save it. That default value is fine. Um, and now we have a prefab with an item set up. So let me just get that out of the way. And if I go and hit play, we're actually not gonna see any changes. The reason for that is because we haven't told the character about this item, so it doesn't know that it should equip the item. Um, we can change that though by going to the inventory component. And right here we have default loadout. So I'm going to add the my assault rifle to that default loadout. And we want one assault rifles. 
And we also want some assault rifle bullets, so I'm going to just give a, the character 100 bullets. Um, this, again, this item type, it maps through the prefab field, and you'll notice if we open up the item type manager, we can see that my assault rifle has automatically been added to the uh, item type for the assault rifle. So now when I hit play, we should see that the character actually does equip the item, and that looks good. The item isn't positioned correctly, but the character is playing the right animation, so we're definitely making progress. In order to position the item, um, I want to click on the item transform, and I will want to rotate it into a good set of values. So it would be something like this. This is a very quick version of it. But you then take these values and copy those values over to the third person perspective item under local spawn position and rotation. I have already set up some good values, so I'm just going to enter those values here. So now after I've set up those values and I hit play, we should see that the assault rifle is positioned correctly in the character's hands. So that looks a lot better. So now that we have set up the item, we've done pretty much the basic configuration for it and, and that part's working well. In the next set of videos, we're gonna go through the nitty gritty of how to actually set up kind of the assault rifle item, the shootables and the melees and all that type of stuff. So, so that's it for this video.